Being a feminine woman doesn't mean being a lesser man. It means evolving. Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. If you are a new subscriber, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you are somebody who follows my blog, has added me on Instagram, and I know a few of you, even though we are still a small virtual friendship circle, <laughs> have still contacted me uh, through Instagram or through the YouTube channel, which is so wonderful. I am so happy to hear the message that resonates with you, and I'm so happy to hear your opinion, how this may have helped you, or perhaps your own thoughts on some of the subjects we talk about. If you are new to my channel, I really hope that you can hit the subscribe button, add me on Instagram, and follow my blog, because I would love to have you as a new friend. Like I have stated in most of my videos, I really consider you a friend. I truly care about you, and all of the topics that I talk about on this channel are things that I definitely want to share with you, because your happiness matters to me. I can assure you that I am here for the right reasons. I wish that I had somebody when I was younger, or even right now, that was also talking about some of the same things that I'm talking about. And I really hope by you following me and reaching out to me, you can be that friend and we can share those things together. So we are going to continue our talk on femininity. Femininity is something that is very elusive, like I said in my previous video. Being a feminine woman does not really have a straightforward definition. There are many different kinds of women with different personalities that are all feminine. There is a lot of great advice on the internet on how to be feminine and steps you can take and the videos that I made are really things that you can do to increase your femininity. But the issue that I found was that there isn't that much motivation besides the actual person talking to you about this that embodies the feminine woman. There isn't as much motivation and reasoning behind why you should want to be a feminine woman and why it's worth your time to develop these skills. Why would somebody need to be a feminine woman in the 21st century when our society really doesn't seem to value you that. In fact, the evidence appears to be clear. If you are a woman in today's modern society that has masculine strengths of leadership, dominance, and assertiveness, you will probably gain more monetary success simply because that's the way that our society operates. The question remains of why would you even want to be a feminine woman? Why wouldn't you want to leave that aside? Apart from those of you who have had a similar journey to mine, where you felt burned out, stressed, and your relationship suffered, and you had a type of aha moment that brought you back to femininity, many of us out there have only perhaps begun to feel that itch, and we don't exactly have that push, that shove into wanting to adapt feminine characteristics. Today's video will address some of the reasons why I think it is worth you adopting femininity and really growing into your feminine spirit. Before I get into some of the reasons, I want to put a little disclaimer out there that you can choose to be operating more from your dominant masculine energy or your more soft feminine energy. I am just appealing to those women on average that tend to have inside of them that feminine spirit that is just waiting to be awakened. Yes, I am aware of the social construct debate surrounding femininity and masculinity as a product of societal values. But it is very difficult to ignore the feminine attributes that go into caring with others, the biological connection that we have to another human being that kind of plays in to all of the feminine traits that characterize us. In one of my previous videos, I talked about balance. So everybody is different, but we are going to assume on average that for you as a woman to develop your femininity is the healthiest thing for you to feel like a completely balanced and whole person. It isn't my debate, right now at least, to get into the societal implications of how masculinity has infiltrated the feminine spirit. We can save that for another day, but for today, we are going to assume that on average, the biological woman is designed to express her femininity to a greater degree than her masculinity. Rejecting femininity was an essential component in the progress movement of the later 20th century. 
So what does that mean? That means that now we are in a culture that just values masculine traits in women, and women don't even know where to begin to express their femininity. Many women feel burnt out, and they don't even know why because they don't have any examples, they don't have any guidance, and they're living under this cultural umbrella that devalues femininity. Any extent of progress that happens too quickly, we know throws everything off balance and doesn't have historically good reputation at being successful, safe, and not ending in some sort of upheaval. I encourage you to do your own research into this. Don't take somebody's word for it. Don't even completely take my word for it, even if this resonates with you. I think that everybody should have a well-informed opinion and should go searching different places for the facts. Similar to like I've said before, I value the opinion of others even though I disagree with it. So I'm asking you right now to do the same on my channel. So without further ado, we are going to get into some of the reasons why I believe you should care about developing your femininity. The first point I want to make is that living in your feminine allows you to harness a type of power that is difficult to explain. So think about the mother and the child. Think about that biological connection that we have to others. Men don't have that. We are the ones that provide nourishment and care for a child. So really, you have that instinct of caring, that instinct of knowing when somebody else needs your assistance. And that is incredibly powering because as women, we can use that to bring people together. Just look at history, look at the songs written, look at the reasons why men would go to war. They did it for women because women were the people that brought everybody together because we have something biologically inside of us that causes for hormones to allow us to foster deep connection with somebody else. We even know this is true with regards to sex. Women treat sex differently. That's why it is so important for women to be in a stable relationship, preferably a marriage, with a person that they share that physical act with because we have hormones that are released that cause us to make emotional connection with somebody else. This type of connection can be used in destructive ways, but it should be used in influential ways. You can use this power to persuade people to do good. Next point that I want to bring up is the value in living in your feminine for the sake of your relationships. So I want to highlight your most intimate relationship. So your marriage or your relationship with your boyfriend. Living in your feminine helps create a type of balance. Assuming that the person you have a relationship with is really living in their masculine, you will be complimentary because we know that being a feminine woman doesn't mean being a lesser man. It means embodying the characteristics that are opposite but complementary to masculinity. I will tell you from my personal experience, when I embraced being a caregiver, when I embraced being somebody who was compassionate in my marriage, that is the point when I would say that my marriage really blossomed and developed a type of comfort that I can't even begin to describe until you try it for yourself. You were living in opposite to somebody. The gaps of whatever needs to be accomplished or the places where one person is weaker than the other will really be filled in. Living too much in your masculine can be energetically draining relationship. Because when you have two people living in the same energy, for example, in the masculine energy, you will be in continuous conflict. Because we know that masculine energy is that aggressive type of energy. And that aggressive energy doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. We know that masculine energy is great and we need that in our world. But to have two people that are operating from the same energy continuously being aggressive towards each other is not going to build the foundation of a strong relationship. The final point that I want to bring up is homemaking because what kind of video would it be on this channel if we didn't talk about homemaking since that is one of the overarching topics of the channel. 
So going a little bit back to biology, we know that women are the creators of life. And we are the creators of nourishment for that life because we carry children. So inherently, we are creative. We tend to be creative on average. Some people are more creative than others. I can tell you that I am not somebody who likes to draw because I can't draw. But you can be creative in a various amount of ways. That could be organizationally. That can be resourcefully. There are a number of things. The point is... And creativity is within the feminine woman. So it's worthwhile to develop because you can have a lot of fun with this, but you can also provide value. For example, you can be creative with your resources at home. You can be creative with something to do with your children, whatever that may be, developing their language skills. I don't know, I don't have kids yet, but I'll get back to you on that. And then of course, there are some of the other topics that I talked about in my other videos, for example, caring for others that is inherently feminine. You can develop your ability to be compassionate. You can develop your skills that enable you to demonstrate that compassion through conversation. I encourage you to watch my other videos. So I try to keep my videos a little bit on the shorter side because I know that if you are a homemaker or if you are a homemaker and you have a job outside of the home, you are probably very busy and I value your time so I try to make this as effective as possible. Like always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, please subscribe because it helps other women find these topics. Like I mentioned, I'm not here raking in the dough, ladies. I'm here for you because I care about you. I want to be your friend and I value your homemaking and your development into femininity. I'll see you in my next video, okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye.